Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're going to be discussing HFDL and how to decode it. Now HFDL is short for High Frequency Data Link. Now HFDL is part of the ACAR system, which works purely on high frequency. Now this is very similar to those ACARS messages that we find on VHF and the Inmarsat satellites. HFDL supports AOC messages, which is Airline Operational Control. It also supports CPDLC messages, which is Controller Pilot Data Link Communication. And it also supports ADS, which is Automatic Dependent Surveillance. Now the HF Data Link is used between aircraft to aircraft or aircraft to ground station. These HFDL transmissions are always found on upper sideband. The modulation types can be 2, 4 or 8 PSK with variable bit rates consisting of either 300, 600, 1200 or 1800 bits per second. Now the frequencies that are used can vary depending on the time of day and location. Now here is a useful PDF document which shows you some of the popular ground stations around the world and the frequencies in which they use. Now if you try searching for one of these ground stations but do not receive anything, just try one of the other frequencies listed for that ground station. Now at my location here in the UK, I was able to receive three different ground stations, IRL in Ireland, ISL in Iceland and CNR in the Canaries. I'll leave a link down in the description to this PDF file as you will most likely need this when you're trying to receive some HFDL. So here is a typical HF data link unit. This particular model also supports CW, SSB voice, cell call and AME, which is amplitude modulated equivalent. They normally have a frequency range of between 2 and 30 MHz and this particular model has 100 Hz channel spacing. Now some units go as low as 10 Hz spacing. The PEP power on SSB is around 400 watts and they're supported working up to around 50,000 feet above sea level. Now this unit weighs an absolute monstrous weight of 19 kilograms and it's powered by 115 volts AC. Now this particular model shown here, this also has an ATU, which is an antenna tuner there on the left. Now this allows the radio to be properly matched to the antenna, depending on what frequency they are using. So when it comes to HF antennas on a plane, these are normally installed in the leading edge of the vertical stabilizers. Although I have seen some aircraft designs where the HF wire extends out from the rear of the aircraft while in flight. So let's take a look at decoding some of these HFDL transmissions. Now this can be easily achieved using a regular SDR receiver and a piece of software called PCHFDL. Now your SDR receiver and SDR software must be capable of receiving below 30 MHz for this to work. In my case, I'm using an RSPDX SDR receiver, I'm using SDR Uno, which is the software to control the RSPDX, and the antenna that I'm going to be using is an NFED half-wave antenna. I have a video on my channel about this antenna if you'd like to know more about it. Now we're also going to be using VB audio cable, which is a virtual audio driver. And this allows us to pipe the SDR Uno audio output directly into the PCHFDL software. Now I'll leave a link down in the description to the PCHFDL software. It is free, but the free version does have a timeout. Now luckily though, it's extremely cheap to purchase a license and I would definitely recommend this so that you can just leave PCHFDL running for as long as you like. I've also tested some other software packages which decode HFDL and in my opinion PCHFDL is the best software out there for doing this. Now one point to mention is that when you install PCHFDL on Windows 10 make sure you install it into a folder which is writable. Easiest thing to do is just install it directly onto your C drive. Now if you install it into program files where the application tries to do it automatically you will not be able to write any of the log files that will be required for mapping, but we'll take a look at this a bit later on. So with PCHFDL all installed, we now need to set SDR Uno's audio output to VB audio cable. We then move over to PCHFDL and we need to set the audio input to VB audio cable. Now some of these ACARS messages also contain a latitude and longitude 
for the aircraft's current position. We can then use Google Earth to show these coordinates on a map and show exactly where the plane is. Make sure you have the Google Earth tick box ticked and this will generate an aircraft KML file in the installation folder. Now as mentioned earlier, if you're on Windows 10 and PCHFDL is installed in program files, then it's possible that the file will not get written. So PCHFDL must be installed in a writable folder. Now within Google Earth, you can go ahead and create a network link to this aircraft.kml file. Give it a name and then change the refresh time to something like every 10 seconds. What will happen is that Google Earth will then read the aircraft.kml file every 10 seconds. And if a new location for the aircraft has been received, you'll see the plane icon on the map move to the new location. Now what is interesting here is that as the aircraft.kml file starts to build up with location points, Google Earth will also draw a plot line so you can see exactly where the aircraft has been. Now as mentioned before, not all HFA cars messages contain latitude and longitude, but there still is lots of information that you can go ahead and view on the main PC HFDL screen. Some of this information is actually ground stations indicating what other ground stations are online in sync and what channels they are transmitting on. One last thing to mention, and that is the tick boxes, which I've ticked on the display section of PC HFDL. Now you can play around with these yourself and turn on and off the ones that you do or do not want to see. But if you copy my settings, you should get most of the data which has been received and decoded. Also above the Google Earth tick box, you can see DX Atlas, which is another popular ham radio mapping tool. Now, if you tick this and have DX Atlas already installed, DX Atlas will automatically open and show any aircraft that has transmitted its location by HFA cars, and then it will be shown on the DX Atlas map. Well, that brings us to the end of this video, and I'd just like to thank all my patrons that continually support this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server, and also check out the TechMinds merchandise and YouTube membership tiers. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.